Hi friends, welcome back to another episode of Generation Tech. My name is Alan. With the holiday season rapidly approaching, I'd like to take a moment and talk about an initiative that we've started here at Generation Tech. Ben? Thanks, Alan. Rebels vs. Imperials, Star Wars vs. Star Trek, driving on the left side versus the wrong side. Since the dawn of time, we've let our petty differences separate us. It's caused countless deaths, wars, and unnecessary steps backwards for humanity. Yes, half a century ago, man first landed on the moon, but we haven't made much progress since. And now our population is facing problems like pollution, overpopulation, and dwindling resources. The world spends a combined $1.6 trillion a year on military forces. Which we use to kill each other. Why don't we pool our resources? Put all our racial, religious, and political differences aside. And use our global military and economic power to achieve something truly great. Like conquering other alien planets and strip mining them for resources. Liberate them from their savage ways by teaching them our language and culture. So we can put them to work in our factories. To make affordable toys so that every human child can have a wonderful Christmas. So this holiday season, we wanted to try something different. We wanted to put humanity first. On a t-shirt. Or on a v-neck so you can look edgy and like you don't follow the rules in society and stuff. We also have baby t-shirts. So if you guys are interested in purchasing one, we've put the link down below. It makes an excellent gift for Christmas or Hanukkah or whatever human festival you're celebrating. And for the next five days, all purchases will be 15% off. Well, guys, in the spirit of our Humanity First initiative today, we'll be talking about five instances where Rebels and Imperials join forces to reach a common goal. When the Emperor died, he left behind a protege named Gallius Rax, who would carry out his last order, otherwise known as the Contingency Plan. The finale of this revenge plan was to destroy the planet of Jakku, along with all the Imperial and Republic forces on it. Admiral Ray Sloan, one of the few good Imperials left, is desperate to stop him. She joins forces with a rebel named Brenton and his wife Nora. Although they initially don't trust each other, they eventually put aside their differences and stop Gallius Rax from blowing up the planet. Ray Sloan would go on to lead the Imperial Remnant to the Outer Rim territories to form the First Order. It was her hope to create a better version of the Empire. Zeb and Callus were destined to hate each other. Zeb was a Lassat, whose species had been more or less wiped out by the Empire during an operation commanded by Callus. The ISB agent equipped all of his soldiers with disruptor rifles, which disintegrated flesh on contact. It was such a terrifying weapon that the Empire made it illegal. Yes, this is the same Empire that built a moon-sized planet-killing laser. Anyway, on one mission over Geonosis, Callus and Zeb find themselves occupying the same escape pod, and while fighting each other, they manage to destroy the controls for the ship, which sends it careening off course towards one of the planet's moons. In the crash, Callus hurts his leg and Zeb has an opportunity to crush his head or shoot him or even eat him. Who knows? But he doesn't do it because he wants an honorable fight with the Imperial. As the temperature continued to drop, so did their urge to kill one another, and their banter back and forth began resembling an old bickering couple. You're going to hurt yourself! <laughs> Will you just shut up? Soon the two realize that they aren't alone, and they come to a quick agreement they're better off joining forces and figuring out how they can survive together. During this ordeal, Zeb and Callus put aside their hostility, and they're able to communicate for the first time. They learn many things about each other and find similarities and sympathy. They began to understand why the other side fought, what motivated them. Callus explains to Zeb that on one of his first missions, his unit was ambushed by a Lassat mercenary working for Saw Gerrera. After awakening from the initial blast, Callus saw the Lassat execute every one of his fellow soldiers. This is why he always hated the Lassat. The two eventually make it out of their predicament and head their separate ways, but are no doubt changed by their experience together. Colonel Belcor was the second in command of the Imperial Garrison on the Outer Rim planet of Ryloth. He was an ambitious man and had been more or less running things in the system. The moth in charge Moors had become increasingly complacent and lazy, and had given most of her responsibilities to Belcor. The colonel had been secretly plotting against Moors and supplying information to the free Ryloth movement headed by Cham Sandula. By causing enough chaos on Ryloth, he hoped to remove Moth Moors and take her place. When Belcor learns that Senator Ornfrita was returning to Ryloth, he plots with Syndulla to carry out an assassination attempt. 
With the information given to them by Belcor, Shamsandula and his fighters managed to take down Ornfrita's Star Destroyer, which secretly was carrying the Emperor and Darth Vader. Belcor now realized that he was complicit in the attempted murder of Palpatine and Darth Vader. The Emperor and Lord Vader managed to escape from the destruction of the Star Destroyer in a shuttle and land on Ryloth. By this point, Colonel Belcor was so deeply involved in the assassination plot, he decided to just go through with it. Of course he fails, but Cham Syndulla lives to fight another day. Another part of the contingency plan was Operation Cinder. This involved the destruction of several Imperial worlds to further create more chaos. Inversio, commander of Inferno Squad, was tasked with helping to destroy Bardos, her home planet, something she was completely against. Aiden and her squad mate Del Mico both decided to go against orders and escape off the planet. With nowhere else to turn, they surrendered themselves to the rebel general Lando Calrissian and give him all their intel on Operation Cinder. Lando gives Aiden and Del two starfighters and an option to either run away or to protect Operation Cinder's next target, Naboo. The two Imperials decide to stay and hop into X-Wings and help take down several satellites hovering over Naboo before heading planetside where they rendezvous with Princess Leia who is leading the defense on the ground. Despite having no intention to defect to the Rebellion, Aiden Versio takes the moral high ground at every important intersection, and weeks later, both Del and Aiden are fully invested in the Rebellion. Naboo wasn't the first time that Del Miko had worked alongside a rebel. On an earlier mission to the planet of Pilio to destroy one of the Emperor's observatories, Del's unit was overrun by insects and the Imperial was trapped in some kind of insect sap when Luke Skywalker came to his rescue. The two realized that they were on a similar mission to find Palpatine's observatory and decided to join forces. During their time together, Luke challenges Del's perception of what a Jedi was, and the Imperial comes to a realization that his Emperor was a Force user. By the time the two reach the observatory, Del decides not to destroy it, and he even allows Luke to take an artifact with him from the vault. This short adventure that Del has with Luke was just about enough to plant seeds of doubt within him about his current employment. It often took extreme situations or greater evils to bring rebels and Imperials together onto the same side. Given the right circumstances, they'll eventually find commonalities and see one another more as individuals rather than just the faceless enemy. Commonalities give way to understanding, and when one truly understands another person, their motives, and their past experiences, they either grow to love them or grow to pity them. Which is kind of the whole point. Humans, even the odd baboon alien, we're all pretty much the same at the end of the day. Genetics have wired us to pursue the same things, had the same desires. This us versus them mentality never comes from the average man. It usually comes in the form of a carefully crafted message created by powerful individuals who benefit from creating hatred and splitting us apart so we can't focus our attention on the real issues. Which is why here at Generation Tech, we believe in putting humanity first. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification button. And a special thanks to all you Patreon supporters out there. We decided to give out a few free t-shirts to our top patrons, so keep an eye out for that. Well guys, thanks for joining us today. If you're watching this, you are Generation Tech.